Good morning, everyone. And welcome to Mount Cor United Methodist Church. I'm Mike Noggle. I'm the pastor here, and I'm so glad that you all can make it this morning. I'm glad that those of you who are joining us online have done so, and we hope that you'll be blessed by our time together. Uh, some announcements this morning before we begin. I want to thank all of you who contributed to the health kits and the school kits uh, that were uh, presented to the district. Uh, they loaded up 110 of the health kits, 117 of the school kits for 217 of those kits between the two churches. So that was great. So thank you so much for contributing to that. Also, uh, just a reminder, uh, on Tuesday evening over at Bethel uh, will be the uh, Administrative Council meeting at 7 o'clock uh, for here at Mount Cory. Also, the Women's Bible Study that Patty's leading will be starting on Thursday night here at 7 o'clock. Uh, that's the 9th uh, September. Um, also, uh, don't forget Fall Fest is coming up on Sunday, the 26th of September from 2 to 4. Uh, that needs a lot of help. We have a lot of fun things in store, but uh, we also need a lot of hands to help make that happen. Uh, so there is a sign-up sheet on the table uh, where the bulletins are in the hallways. So if you are able, please uh, sign up uh, to help us in some way during those two hours. Uh, also, the Habitat for Humanity build on the 23rd, uh, Thursday the 23rd from 8 till noon. If you wish to help with the lunch, uh, contact uh, Nancy uh, Thomas. Uh, if you wish to donate your time to labor, uh, we'll be doing mostly interior finishing work by that time. It's amazing. I was there a week ago Saturday for the wall raising, and within four work days, it was all the walls were up and the trusses were on, and it's, it's crazy how quickly they do it. And that's for two houses side by side. Uh, so if you can do that, uh, please do that. Um, Christian Clearing House, our caring cupboard basket is still down there for collection. Also, uh, they are having their charity, annual charity golf scramble uh, out at uh, Sycamore Springs uh, there north of Arlington, uh, and that is uh, on Friday the 10th. Uh, so if you would like to participate in that, um, uh, there's information in the newsletter. This past week, we did get the newsletter out. Um, for some of you, copies may be back there on the table. Uh, most of you should have received them by email. Uh, and um, if you did not, make sure you take a look at that. There's a lot of good information. This uh, coming Thursday evening, uh, Matthew West is in concert up at uh, um, Cedar Creek in Perrysburg. Uh, so if any of you have an interest in that, uh, he is here. Uh, I am going to be on vacation this coming week. Um, I will be uh, off starting after service today, and I'll be back in the office on Tuesday the 14th. Um, part of the reason of that is next Saturday, my youngest daughter is getting married, uh, so we'll be a little occupied this week with some things going on. Um, in the meantime, uh, our lay leaders are available. If you need assistance, the numbers are in the bulletin, Patty and TC. And also, uh, in Patty and TC, I didn't let you know this uh, ahead of time. I'm sorry, just found out. But Greg uh, Fox has agreed if you need pastoral care, he'll fill in. And he's going to be gone the following week, and I'm going to fill in for him. So, um, And Greg is uh, at Trinity and also at uh, New Hope over in uh, Rawson. Uh, so uh, if you need any assistance, Since during this week, uh, please let Patty or TC know, and they can direct you from there. Um, we are having our collection. If you see on your insert, in addition to the information regarding the book orders, which you can still do, and also the Fall Fest, the youth are having a, uh, a goal this year of collecting 100 uh, hats and gloves for uh, for distribution uh, this, uh, this Christmas season. So uh, we'll be collecting those in September and October. Uh, so if you can help out with that, there is a basket right inside the front door to help with that. Just drop them in and uh, we'll be uh, thrilled to do that. Information cards, you have new information to provide us. Uh, address, phone number, email, or have information you want to present to me, uh, just put it on here, put it in the offering basket. Do we have, uh, before we get to the birthdays announcements, do we have any other uh, announcements we need to share? Uh, 
Yes. I have a sign-up sheet back here on the sound cabinet for the lunch that we are providing for the um, Habitat build in Finley. It's on Thursday the 23rd. Um, there's a few items that um, we could use some help with. If you are willing and you bring them to church next Sunday or the Sunday after, I will meet you at your car. That way you don't have to bring them in here. Um, also, if you're willing to um, donate some bags of ice, um, those need to go in the freezer at Bethel. And again, I can meet you there if you don't have a key to the building. Um, so any help would be appreciated. Thank you. And of course, Mary Ann had a birthday just on uh, Friday. And uh, I know Tim, Tim Welsh has had one yesterday. Nick Levins and Trevor Welsh have one today, as I understand. Is that right, Tom? And uh, let's see who else. And we have a couple of anniversaries. Zach and Jill Slanker and Tony and Leslie and Hector are having an anniversary. So, uh, how many of you here have birthday or anniversary in the month of September? Aha. So, uh, we're going to be playing a song here in a moment, and if you can, and if you're able, we have the church box up here. That uh, collection for birthdays and anniversaries in the month goes to uh, the mission fund for uh, religious education. Uh, so, uh, by the way, you help us. <laughs>
This is the day that the Lord has made. God of all, the breath of life, living water, Savior, friend. Come as the hungry, feed on his word. Come as the thirsty, drink of his love. Come as the faithful, worship the Lord. Let us pray. We are gathered here today, Lord God, as your people, to offer you our sacrifice of prayer and worship. Through our hymns and songs, our prayer and meditation, the joining of our lives and fellowship, we worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Enfold us in your love and empower our worship that your name might be glorified in this place and in our lives. Amen. Will you join me in our opening hymns, uh, songs of praise? Oh, for a thousand songs to sing, which you can find in your hymnal, page 57. We'll be singing the first four verses of that, and then follow that by the, uh, page 66 in the praise book, I Will Sing of the Mercies. Both of those are also found on the screen. If you're able, please rise. be seated. We've come to that point in our worship where we are sharing with the Lord our joys and our concerns, a few of them that I want to share with you this morning, and then I'll open it up to any of you who have others. Uh, First of all, um, uh, praise uh, for the wedding taking place this coming Saturday up at Grand Rapids, Ohio, between my daughter Emily and her fiancé Jay. And just ask blessings on them as they uh, begin their life as husband and wife. Uh, We have some good news on Colby Sherrick. She is out of the hospital. She has some surgery she'll be facing here in a few weeks, but uh, she did uh, get out of the hospital again. So that is a big praise uh, again. Uh, And um, but she still needs prayers, obviously. Uh, I did find out yesterday. 
poor Kennedy Holiday was at a family gathering yesterday, took a fall and broke her arm. Uh, and uh, not a fun thing to do on a family gathering, but uh, so please remember uh, Kennedy uh, as uh, she deals with that. And uh, I forget, how old is Kennedy? Audrey, how old is Kennedy? Do you, how old is Kennedy? 10. Yeah, so 10 and just getting ready to start school, that's not a fun thing to do. Uh, so please remember her. Um, obviously, we continue to pray for those who uh, were devastated by the uh, storm, uh, Hurricane Ida and its remnants as it passed through the country, and also those uh, in uh, harm's way in Afghanistan. Are there others uh, this morning that we need to lift up in prayer? Very good. Bob. Tian continues to improve and went rock climbing yesterday. I would say that's an improvement. <laughs> uh, Nicole's still not ready to leave him by himself, but uh, he is improving. Uh, Gina's off of her uh, medicine for the infection she had, and we'll start back on her chemo treatment next week, and they're going to reduce the dosage. So, very good. Hopefully, she'll get along all right with that. Yeah, we continue to pray for both of them, and we're grateful. Uh, that God has brought them thus far and ask that he continues that healing till its completion. Are there others? I think you shared with me. I don't know if you shared with everybody else, but yes, Gina's getting married in October, so that's fantastic news uh, and blessing on them as well. Uh, those of you that have been going here for some time will remember back uh, several years ago, a uh, lady I worked with, her grandson had a uh, malignant brain tumor. He was, I think, five years old at that time. Uh, went through a tremendous amount of, you know, surgeries and so on and so forth. Uh, I got a text from his grandmother this week. He is now 15 years old. He's a freshman in high school, and he's playing sports. So. Uh, you pray, things get taken care of. Very good. That is a praise. Thank you. Are there others? Yes. A um, couple things. Uh, first off, um, Brian Gessinger from Pandora, uh, he passed away from COVID. He's only 63, so, so that's, uh, but uh, I knew it wasn't. Oh, I did not know that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Jean. Pastor yes. Mike's mom is asking for prayers for um, your sister who's coming for the wedding. Ah, traveling mercies. <laughs> yes. She's traveling up from Florida. And uh, motherly worry uh, on, on that. But absolutely, we will pray for that. Any others? Over here. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Um, <clears throat> being a veteran, um, Vietnam era, I did my enlist. I enlisted and did my mandatory six years. This uh, seeing this flag 
that should be at half mast. Well, that's a Navy term, half staff. Um, and people have got them run, run all the way up and just leave them. Kind of torques me. Church down here at Rawson, their, their flag's up 24 7, no lights on it, all weather, in every form of weather. The flag is torn from end to end. It's a two piece flag now. Well, I stopped and lowered it the other day, and I was waiting. I wanted to see if I could catch somebody there. Well, I went by the other night, and there was a car there, so I beat on the door till somebody answered, and I got to meet their uh, fairly new pastor. Just so happens they were having a council meeting. And shy person that I am. <laughs> you, you are in church, right? might I remind you too soon? <laughs> the pastor invited me in and uh, we had a little discussion. Discussion. And when I left, uh, they assured me the flag was coming down and they were getting a new flag, an all-weather flag and uh, they were going to put solar lights on it and that somebody would run the flag up and down uh, on days like, and I explained to them, we had 13 people killed trying to get people out of Afghan to safety. And, you know, it, and I just told them that this is not a trinket, it's not a toy, it's not an ornament. This is our country that people died for. This is our flag. And uh, nice person that I am, they agreed with me. And I praise God. <laughs> no well, we, will, we, we certainly need to be in prayer for our nation and all those who are still struggling to get out of Afghanistan who uh, need to and for that whole situation. Are there others? Harold. I have an unspoken praise and an unspoken prayer request. We'll acknowledge them both. Thank you. Any others? If not, will you join me in our prayer hymn, which can be found on page 420 of your hymnal or up on the screen, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. You may remain seated uh, during this hymn. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, 
We come to you this morning giving you praise and worshiping you. You are worthy of that. You have created us. You breathe the breath of life into each one of us, and we are grateful for that gift. Lord, we know that you have a plan for us as individuals and a plan for this church. Help us to be open to your guidance and your leading. We also know that despite the fact that we can feel very small and insignificant at times, you hold us up as a pride of your creation. And you love us and you care for us and you deeply want a relationship with each one of us. And you listen to our prayers. And we've seen evidence of that. We've seen evidence of your healing touch uh, beginning with uh, the Burkharts from their accident and from uh, Tian and Gina from their uh, surgeries and uh, for uh, those who have uh, been injured. We just know that you are there to answer prayers and we certainly thank you for those. We do know that we can trust you with all of our needs. So we continue to pray for Tian and Gina that the healing that you started in them uh, be completed. Ask that you bless the wedding of Emily and Jay and also of Gina and her uh, soon-to-be husband. Be with Becky as she travels back and forth from Florida uh, for this event. We thank you for the healing progress you've made in the life of Colby, that she can come home again and ask that you continue to be with her as she heals and be with Kennedy as she goes through this uh, broken arm and uh, heal it and, and know that, let her know that you are with her and, and relieve her of any pain. And certainly, Dwayne's testimony of the 15-year-old young man who is now uh, recovered and is uh, playing sports and freshman in high school. We just thank you for evidence of your love and your answer to prayer. So be with Lana's neighbor, uh, the baby, uh, as he deals with health illnesses and be with David Burkhardt as he continues to deal with COVID. And we ask you to be with the families affected by the hurricane and the remnants of it that have swept from the Gulf Coast up through the East Coast. There's a lot of people in pain, a lot of people who have been devastated by the damage that was done. We just ask that you be with them, guide them, let them know that you are there and provide a way for them to get their feet back on the ground. And also be with those who've lost loved ones the Basinger family in Pandora, all the family and friends of the servicemen that were lost in Afghanistan. Be with those who continue to try and flee that country. Provide a way. Lord, we know that we can trust you with our prayers. And we know that you are worthy of our praise. You answer so many prayers that we don't acknowledge and we apologize for that. But we know there are unspoken prayer requests. We un know there are unspoken praises on the hearts of those here today and those listening in. And so we take a moment to lift those up to you now. Lord, as we entered into this place, we dropped off our tithes and offerings in the basket and placed the birthday and anniversary offering in the church basket up front. We just ask you to bless the givers. We ask you to bless the gift. Increase them and use them in a way that is pleasing to you and give us the wisdom to use it wisely. And Lord, most of all, we Thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus, who paid the ultimate price for our sin, that you provided a way for us to be with you for all eternity. And we are forever grateful. In your 
precious and holy name, we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. See, do we have any young ones who want to come forward today? Oh, we have a couple. All right. <clears throat> That's good. I'm just going to sit right here. Hi, guys. I didn't see you sitting up front. I saw you sitting back there. Hi, have a seat. <clears throat> good of you to join us this morning. You know, we're talk, going to talk this morning about a guy by the name of Joseph. You know, a lot of times when we think of Joseph, we think of Joseph and Mary and the baby in the manger, right? Well, this is a different Joseph. This is a Joseph who lived a lot earlier than him. And this is, uh, uh, he is the son of a guy by the name of Jacob. And Joseph had 11 brothers and sisters, or 11 brothers. Can you imagine having that many brothers or sisters? Probably thinking of the, the two, three, or four that I've got is more than enough, right? <laughs> I've just given them nightmares for the next week. But Joseph was one of 12 boys in his family. And of course, his dad played favorites. He loved Joseph more than all the others. And you know, how do you think that made Joseph feel? Or the rest of the brothers feel that Joseph was given special treatment? Yeah. Maybe sad. Sad, yeah. Huh? I didn't hear you. Disappointed? Yeah. Anything else? Sad, disappointed, jealous, mad, all of those things. Because, you know, what's so special about him? He even got a pretty colored coat that his father gave him. It's a, there's even a Broadway show about that, about his technicolor dream coat. But anyway, do you think God loves his children differently? Does he play favorites? No. No. So it doesn't matter whether we're rich or poor. Doesn't matter whether we're boy or girl. Doesn't matter whether we're black or white or brown or yellow or whatever color we are. He loves all of us just the same, doesn't he? And we need to remember that because for each one of us, we may see other people out there that we think are more important than us, that maybe uh, have better lives than us, but just remember this, that he loves us just the same as anybody else that you see, okay? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for uh, creating us and making us who we are. And we uh, just ask that you help us uh, understand that you love us and will always be with us and never leave us or forsake us. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Bear with me. I'm, my back's uh, bothering me a little bit today. If you uh, use your head, it won't. Evidently, I didn't use my head yesterday. Um, hey, is there any NASCAR fans out there? People, huh? Then y'all remember Dale Earnhardt, right? Remember how he used to dress in black because he was the intimidator? I noticed this morning when I was getting ready, but mine's more like Intimidation is more like slimming. <laughs> okay, uh, fortunately, this is all in Genesis today. 
I give you a chance there. Everybody ready? Then Joseph had a dream. When he, told, when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, listen to the dream that I have had. We were gathering grain in the field. My bundle of grain stood up. Your bundles of grain gathered around it and bowed down to my bundle. Then his brothers said to him, are you going to be our king? Are you going to rule over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for what he said. <clears throat> Joseph followed his brothers and found them at Dotham. When they saw him far away, before he came near them, they made plans to kill him. They said, they said to one another, here comes this dreamer. Now, come, let's kill him and throw him into one of the deep holes. Then we will say that a wild animal ate him, and we will see what becomes of his dreams. But Reuben heard this and saved him from their hands, saying, let us not kill him. Reuben then said, Do not put him to death. Throw him into this hole here in the desert, but do not lay a hand on him. He wanted to be able to save Joseph and return him to his father. Then they sat down to eat. When they looked up, they saw a group of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. They were taking spices and perfumes on their camels to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, What do we get by killing our brother and covering his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him. For he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers listened to him. Some Midianite traders were passing by. So the brothers pulled Joseph up out of the hole, and they sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver, and they took Joseph to Egypt. Now this next one is quite a ways down the line. So, then Joseph could not hide his feelings in front of all who stood by him. He cried, send all the people away from me. So no one was with him when Joseph told his brothers who he was. He cried so loud that the Egyptians heard it, and those of Pharaoh's house heard, heard of it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer, for they were afraid, of, they were afraid in front of him. Joseph said to his brothers, Come near me. So they came near, and he said, I am your brother Joseph whom you sold into Egypt. But do not be troubled or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me here before you to save your life. For the land has been without food these two years, and there are five more years without plowing or gathering. God sent me before you to make sure that, all, that your people will keep living on earth. Now many of you will be saved. The word of God. May the Lord bless his reading of this word this morning. Will you pray with me? <clears throat> May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. <clears throat> we are continuing on our series of the story uh, put together by Randy Frazee and <clears throat> some of the books that you have uh, ordered help uh, amplify on what we're doing here this morning. But before we get into the subject, by the name of Jennifer that uh, Randy talks about in one of his writings. Nurse, she, if she graduated from college, she'd be the first one in her family to do so. And she had a heart. She knew she had a heart to do it. She knew that she would be a blessing to others, and that's what she really wanted to do. Uh, but there was the problem that she did not have the money to get in. She knew she could get into school, but she couldn't. Uh, afford it right then. So she decided she's going to work hard, save as much money as she could to allow her an opportunity to go to school. And to help her save money, she stayed home with her single mother and her brother. Uh, and every so often, out of each check that she got, she'd put some in a box in her room. And she loved her brother very much, but her brother had problems. And he had an addiction issue. And he'd get into trouble a lot and he would get into trouble with drugs. And she stuck up with, for him, she loved him, she cared for him, she tried to steer him the right way. But it was a struggle. But she had this dream, and it was a dream that she was working for, and she was working for that, and one day she went into her room to put her next deposit into her box and found that it was empty except for $20. And she suddenly realized that this brother who she loved had stole from her to use for his drug addiction. And her dreams 
were changed instantly. Have you ever been there? You had plans, you had dreams, and all of a sudden circumstances or events happened. Somebody treated you differently, and those dreams seemed to evaporate. Things didn't go the way that you planned. And it can be hard, because we only see what is in front of us. We only see the things that are happening to us. And the subject of our story this morning, Joseph, is exactly one of those people. And I think you'll be able to relate to him. As we said, this is Joseph of the Old Testament, not the New. Joseph, who had his one of 12 brothers. Of course, we were with Abraham and Sarah last week, and we saw how he had Isaac, uh, the son, and then Isaac and Rebekah had the twins, Esau and Jacob, and um, how they favored one or the other of them, and that you can read that whole story. You know, reading the Bible, sometimes you read it uh, for two reasons. One is to find out how to do things, and then also to find out how not to do things. So if you're looking for parenting advice, don't read the story of Isaac and Jacob, because they, they, their parenting skills left a lot to be desired. But yet, even though they favored their children and caused such animosity and dysfunction within their families, God still let his covenant come down through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that was going to be the people that he was going to work with, as flawed as they were. So there was Joseph. And of course, we know uh, Jacob cheated his uh, brother out of the blessing. He found it a little bit because he wanted to marry the woman of his dreams and then found out that uh, he had been cheated by her uncle and uh, suddenly he had to marry her sister and then he had to work a number of other years you can read all this in in the old testament there but he finally had 12 sons but the one that was the apple of his eye was his next to youngest by name of joseph he lavished praise on him he treated him better he gave him gifts including his beautiful robe of many colors I guess I better turn my mic on. Um, he gave him this robe of all these different colors, and I'm sure Joseph was not prancing around in this robe in front of his brothers any at all, would you? And they disliked him for that. But what they disliked even more is that he had this ability to have dreams, and he told them about these dreams, and he told them about this dream that he had when they were all going to bow down before him. They're all older than him. And we got to going to bow down before this spoiled little brat of a brother of ours? Are you kidding me? They hated him all the more. So one day he goes out to find them, and they see him coming from afar, and they plot to kill him. They've had enough. We're going to get rid of him. And so they plot to do that. One brother sticks up for him and says, let's not kill him. Let's throw him in a pit. His plan, Reuben's plan, was to maybe save him. But they end up throwing him in a pit, and soon a, some travelers came by, and they had the idea, well, let's not kill him. We won't have that blood on our hands. We'll sell him into slavery. And they did, and he's carried off into Egypt. So there's Joseph, 17 years old, the favored son, now in bondage in Egypt. What do you think's going on in his mind about life and how God is looking out after him? He's brought up knowing God. He's brought up believing that God is with him. And yet here he finds himself in slavery. So he gets taken to Egypt and he is sold to who, a man who just happens to be the captain of the guard of the mighty Pharaoh. 
And he is dedicated and he works hard, this young man, Joseph. And it says in the scripture that the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered. And it got to the point where Potiphar trusted him so much and trusted his skills that he put Joseph in charge of his entire house. And the estate grew and prospered. Can you imagine? Here he was in a foreign land. He thought he was in slavery. Now he's been put in charge of this big estate. All's well, it ends well, right? Well, no. Scripture said he's well-built and handsome. He's a young man. Potiphar's off helping Pharaoh a lot. Pharaoh's wife is back there. You don't have to guess from watching any steamy soap opera or anything else what she has in mind. The appeal of the gardener and the uh, pool boy is, didn't happen just recently. And she doesn't make any bones about what she wants. She doesn't bat her eyes or flirt a little bit. She says, you, come to bed with me. Joseph's in a very difficult position, isn't he not? He is a servant. This is the wife of the master. Servants who disobey their master get punished severely. And he knows this. It's been very easy for him to just obey. But Joseph had a heart for God, and he had a heart for what is right. And he says, my master has withheld nothing from me. His entire estate he's made available to me except for you. How can I do that wicked thing to him and to sin against my God? And he refused. So what happens? Well, she accuses him of rape. And he's sent to prison for a crime that he did not commit. Now understand, Egyptian prisons at this time were not like the jails that we have today. They were either large pits in the ground or they were these fortresses like facilities where prisoners were uh, kept and awaited their punishment, usually involving torture or death. And here he was, even worse off than he was before. First he's a favored son. Then he's in the bottom of the pit that his brothers sell him into slavery. He's in slavery. Then he rises to the height of comfort in the household of the Pharaoh's guard. And now he's in prison. What would you be thinking? See, all he could see was his lower story. And it appeared that God had abandoned him. Have you ever been in that situation? Something has happened in your life that's bad and horrible. And you're looking around and... Very good by the name. It's a whole world. It'll be all right. In the second verse, Joseph probably could have said this too. And I think many of us would say that as well. It goes like this. Father, you say everything is going to be all right, but my circumstances say I won't last through the night. I need your word to help me now, need you to pull me through. I need a miracle, a breakthrough. I need you. They say you hold the whole world, world in your hand, but my world's falling apart like it's made of sand. Am I small enough to slip through the cracks? Can you take my broken pieces and put them back? Give me the faith to believe you are on my side. Open my eyes to see you working in my life. Let the past remind me you never fail. Tell me, my soul, tell my soul it is well. And we struggle because we don't see, because we can't see God's overarching picture. Because we're going to know here in a moment that God is in control the whole time. He has this master plan. Joseph can't see that. We can't see that. But scripture says this, but while Joseph was there in prison, the Lord was with him and showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. How did he do that? 
Well, see, Joseph had this skill, as we said, of interpreting dreams. And he successfully interpreted dreams for the prison warden. And the Pharaoh was also having dreams at the time. And none of his advisors could help him with it. And they hear of this young Hebrew boy down in the prison who interprets dreams. Bring him forward. Let's see what he can do. And he comes up and he interprets the dream. And he says it's going to be seven years of great harvest. And then there's going to be seven years of famine. And it is the purpose that you need to store up during this time so that you will have enough when the famine hits. And he was believed. And before you know it, Joseph, this one, this Hebrew boy sold into prison, sold into slavery by his brothers, is now second in command of all of Egypt. You see, at each time when it appeared that God had abandoned him, he chose to trust. He chose to believe that God knew what he was doing. And as the story goes on, as T.C. read at the end, the brothers came because obviously they were now in need of food. And see, God created this nation. His covenant was going to be through them. But he needed to have a plan to save them. So he provided a way. That way was Joseph. He sent them ahead to prepare a way. And when they came to buy food, Joseph reveals himself to them. And you can think he could be angry, he could be vengeful, he could, be, he could punish them, he could have them killed. He's second in command of all of Egypt. But no, he cries and brings them forward and says, it was not you who sent me here, but God. God sent me here. And what you meant for evil, God meant for good. What you meant for evil, God meant for good. You see, there are times in our lives When we are confronted with that choice, are we going to trust or are we not? Randy Frazee says this, no matter how painful some moments seem, your story is not over. If you love God and align your life to his upper story purposes, everything in your life, the ups, the downs, the mountaintops, the valleys, the highs, the lows, the raises and the rejections, the good and the bad, they're all working together to accomplish good. So be patient. Trust God. Let him mold you during this, these difficult seasons to equip you for the assignment ahead. Because you don't know what is ahead of you. For another 80 years, Joseph served as second command in all of Egypt. Could he have known that when he was in the bottom of the pit that his brothers sewn him into? Could he have known that when he was in the prison, languishing away, falsely accused? No. So what situation do you find yourself in that you just can't see what's going to happen tomorrow? Paul says in Romans 8, 28, we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purposes. Jennifer, the girl that we started off with, her lore story was all about betrayal and anger and disappointment. And she came to church one Sunday and a service really touched her, a sermon really touched her, and so she decided she was going to take that last $20 and put it in the offering plate. And she wrote the pastor a note, didn't sign the last name or have any address, just had her name on it. It was a big church. Couldn't identify her very easily. And he, she just wanted to let them know that this impacted her, and this is how she responded, because she was responding out of faith. 
because she had come to a place where she could trust God in spite of her circumstances and discovered that he was indeed trustworthy and that she was not forgotten or abandoned. So the next Sunday, the pastor read that note during the first service. I touched two families so much they came forward and said, whoever this is, we want to pay for her college. And not just one year, we want to pay for all four. During second service, he read the note again and he said, if Jennifer is in here, please come forward. At the end of service, I need to talk to you. And she sheepishly did. And she was told of this generous offer. And she wept uncontrollably. Tears of disbelief and joy. Because God provided a way. She graduated, finished in the top tier of her class. See, God's upper story weaves a tale of relentless pursuit. He doesn't just desire to turn whatever was intended for evil to good in your life. He wants you. He wants to be with you. He wants to have fellowship with you. He refused to allow a famine to destroy the nation he was building, just as he refused to let a brother's selfishness destroy Jennifer's dreams, and he refuses to let anything stand in the way of his desire to be with each and every one of you here. We have no idea what betrayals and injustices await us today or may confront us tomorrow. All we know for sure is that in our lifetimes, we will have many occasions to wonder if God has forgotten us. Life is filled with disappointment, but when it hits, we must rise above it in the strength of God's goodness, hearing him whisper that he loves us and will never abandon us no matter what. If you look beyond what seems to define our lower stories and trust that God is writing something much bigger, then we can trust that the ending will be much better than just happily ever after. It will be welcome home. He provided a way for his nation through Joseph. He provided a way for Jennifer through the schools. And he provides a way for each one of us because he knows that the sin that affects our lives is not something that we can defeat ourselves. It was going to take the sacrifice of a perfect lamb in order to provide us a way for us to get to heaven to be with him. As long as we trust God, he always provides a way, a way out, a way up. And Jesus was his way. He sent his one and only son, the perfect lamb, to be a sacrifice for each one of us. And so on the night that he was to be betrayed, he gathered with his disciples in the upper room and they shared the Seder meal of the Passover, of the Last Supper. And during the meal, he took the bread And he raised it to his father and he blessed it and he thanked his father for it and he said, this is my body broken for you. Each time you eat of it, do this in remembrance of me. And at the end of the meal, he took the cup. And once again, he lifted it to his father. He blessed it and he thanked his father for it. And he said, this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. The new covenant, as oft as you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this gift of bread and fruit of the vine. Help us to remember the purpose for why we are taking it and the price that was paid, the sacrifice that was paid on the cross for 
a sin that we committed. Like Joseph, he was blameless and punished. But he was punished for us because he took on our sin so that we could be righteous in your sight. Help us cleanse us. Help us to understand that sacrifice and share it with others as we go forth. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Folks, the table is now set. In the United Methodist Church, we celebrate an open table, which means you do not have to be a member of this church or any church to partake in the Lord's Supper. You just have to have a willing and open heart seeking Him, wanting to have a relationship with Him and asking for forgiveness of your sins. So I invite you to come forward. As you come forward, I ask you to come down this side aisle, take the element, and come here in groups of your family. Uh, and then I will invite you to take the bread, and I will share with you the juice. If you're not able to come forward, stay where you're at, and we'll bring it to you afterwards. The table is set. Please come. body of Christ broken for you, take and eat.
Father God, we thank you for this sacrifice, this gift of bread and fruit of the vine. Help us renew a right spirit within us and share it with all those who we come in contact with outside these walls. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. If you would join us for our closing hymn, you can find it up on the screen or on page 368 in your hymnal, My Hope is Built. Please stand. And now until we meet again, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.